Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil! Fun fact, a while back a friend of mine managed to find some proto-artwork of the super duper sumos floating about online. Just going off of this picture. You would be forgiven for thinking eh, looks like a decent, if bit an itch, topic for an action cartoon with comedy elements. Sadly, the show does not live up to what the promo images imply. Also, I do find red, ironically a far better fitting color for Booma than blue, since there is nothing calming about his character in the slightest in terms of how viewers will see him in the show, but we'll get to the, fun that is Booma, soon. Now, looking at the Pato type art you may think really, this is the art style everyone always complains about with the show. They don't look that bad considering they're super powered sumo wrestlers. True enough. On first glance our supersized sumo heroes don't look particularly ugly, at least if you're like me and used to dealing with expansion or weight gain based fan art or artwork in general online or if you have a thing for bhmaka big handsome men in general. If you aren't those things however, then they probably do look a tad off-putting. Regardless, the design for the SDS trio are, interesting in a way. Sumo wrestlers, with some exceptions in the higher ranks such as those of the Yakazuna rank and their elaborate apron mawashi belts, generally don't have much in the way of an eye-catching uniform. Women wrestlers, with their leotards under their mawashi, have more to work with, in my opinion. Batman has his batch tick. Superman his circus strongman inspired look. The Silver Age version of the Flash had a sleek and aerodynamic costume with lightning bolts while Jay Jarek had his silver helmet invoking the Greek messenger god Mercury. A sumo superhero though? They're a tad more, limited unless you get creative with their overall design in terms of body shape, height, weight, and mawashi design and pattern. Most artists, generally, don't bother hard and SDS is sadly no exception to that rule. Design-wise the Super Duper Sumo's trio all have the same general build, no doubt to make Dick's animation process easier. However, while there are obviously differences in terms of mawashi color, hairstyles, and minor details like that, but, ha, by and large they all have a uniformity to their design as characters. Naturally, some of this can be chalked up to the fact that well, they're a team of sumo wrestling themed superheroes, of course they're going to have similar broad, heroic looking builds. Which is true enough, but given the fact that the SDS wear their mawashi near 24-7 with a few exceptions throughout the series shows the limitations of their character design in terms of showing personality. Aside from the colors, their mawashi are of all made the same rubber band cartoony stretchable material. Not even a rope style belt for, say, Kimo the Japanese sumo, for example, to make things more interesting. Their mawashi have no patterns or logos to make the three stand out more than their difference in ethnicity or hairstyling already do. Also not show in these two pics is how, off the SDS compared to other members of the cast. Be they supporting or one-offs, much of which naturally goes back to the interesting choice in art style. I would also be remise if I didn't mention that their legs are stubby as all hell, too. Random complaint and I know that in real life sumo legs like that are ideal in a sumo bout but still, there are degrees to these things people. But enough about the SDS as a collective for now, it's time to look at the sumos individually with my own personal worst to best ranking. And the award for worst super duper sumo goes to.